Hello and uh, good evening ladies and gentlemen, this is Al24 Midmark News and coming up next in our news program. Our Senior Foreign Minister Mr. Aram Talamam represented Wednesday Naimi in Naimi experience of Algeria in the field of industry, calling for acceleration of industrialization process in Africa key sectors. In the Middle East, thousands more than two Palestinians men killed by the Zionist forces in Nablus. European Union Energy Minister locked on on Thursday over proposed gas price cap at 275 euros per megawatt per hour. And finally, Ukraine struggled Thursday to repair its assaulted power and water services after the latest missiles fired by Russia. Welcome again. I'm your host, Abdurrahim Kashour, and those were today's pop stories. First, in Algeria, the Algerian Minister of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad, Mr. Aram Tala Mamra, highlighted on Wednesday in Naimi during the meeting of Preparatory Executive Council of the African Union Extraordinary Summit on Industrialization and the African Free Trade Zone, scheduled today, Friday, Algeria's experience in the field of industry, calling for accelerating the, cur the course of industrialization on the African continent in key areas. The Director of Follow-up and Promotion Commercial Initiative at the Algerian Ministry of Trade and Export Promotion, Salim Regad, revealed expectations that Algeria's export outside the hydrocarbon sector will reach $7 billion by the end of the current year, in light of achieving $5 billion during the nine months of this year. The year 2021 witnessed a big leap in achieving the amount of $5 billion, which the higher authorities of the country controlled by the end of this year. We will be at the level of $7 billion, which is so far at $5.5 billion in the last nine months. And for this, it is very possible that we will conclude this year. Algeria has uh, strongly condemned the terrorist attack that targeted on Tuesday a unit of Chadian defense and security forces in the west of the country causing sources of, uh, of dead and wounded people. A communique of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and National Community Abroad stated the following. Algeria strongly condemns the terrorist attack perpetrated on November 22nd against a unit of Chadian Defense and Security Forces in the Buka Tolorum Island, leaving scores of dead and injured. Algeria extends its sincerest condolences to the families of the victims, wishing a swift recovery to the injured, and reiterates its support for the people and government of Brotherly Chad in its fight against terrorist groups. Algeria has once again called on the international community to pool efforts in a bid to eradicate this dangerous plague that threatens the country's security and stability. President and the chairperson of the African Union uh, Commission, Musa Fakki, announced that talks were underway to hold a preliminary meeting for a national reconciliation conference that includes all Libyans. Fakki said that there is a positive response from various parties, adding that communication is established with all Libyan uh, stakeholders about national reconciliation as it may open the door to a political solution in Libya. Simlan of Thought, Abdel Hamid Dbeiba, head of the Libyan National Unity Government, said that there will be no stability in the country without Minister of Interior because its real role is to ensure security. And Dbeiba added, why following up the Ministry of Interior's uh, emergency plan to publicize security, that all security departments are ready to hold elections, describing the ministry as a standing like a rock against the waves despite all wars and differences. I want to reaffirm in this blessed meeting that the Department of Security Operations is prepared for the elections. This ministry is ready to fully guarantee this important event 
in the history of Libya and even of the region. In the late hours of uh, Wednesday evening, Tunisian government raised fuel prices for the fifth time this year. The energy ministry said as part of plan to reduce energy supports, a policy change wanted by the country's international investors. The new decision raises the total hike in fuel prices this year to about 20%. The gasoline price will be raised on Tuesday to 2.525 dinners per litre from 2.400 dinners, according to the ministry's statement. In the Middle East, thousands of Palestinians turned out for the funeral procession of Mohammed Abu Kishk and Mohammed Herzullah, which began on Thursday morning in Nabla city. The two Palestinian men have surrendered to their wounds after they were shot by the Zionist army in separate incidents in the northern occupied West Bank city of Nablus. The Secretary General of the League of the Arab States, Ahmed Abu Laid, is participating in the seventh regional forum of the, Uni of the Union for the Mediterranean. Abu Laid stressed that the Palestinian people have suffered from an occupation regime that can only be described as a racial discrimination. He added that the Zionist violations and repression are escalating in a way that threatens to explode the situation in the occupied territories and that this is happening under the eyes and ears of international community, which seems to have abandoned its responsibility to achieve the vision of two states through negotiation. Lawmakers in Lebanon failed for the seventh time to elect a successor to former President Michel Aoun, even though the vacancy is hampering efforts to rescue the country's economy. Nabil Khassini. In last October, Michel Aoun was the last Lebanese president to walk on a red carpet as head of state. This was the last time Lebanon had a president. Since then, Lebanese lawmakers marked a failure after a failure to elect a successor to Mr. Aoun, who left with no replacement. MPs failed to elect a president, despite the vacancy of the position since the beginning of November due to the deep political divisions in the midst of an accelerating economic collapse the authorities are unable to contain. I'm against the capital controls law in its current form and the idea of abolishing deposits through the so-called economic recovery plan. Of course we are against that. In this popular market in Beirut, residents of the Lebanese capital have resorted to second-hand shopping to get by during the severe economic turmoil that has loomed over the country over the past three years. Here, Ahmed runs a shop that displays used products. The decline in the purchasing power for citizens and the collapse of the currency pushed many to sell their furniture or electrical appliances. People have reached a point where they are selling kids' toys. You can find good things to use here in this shop because we cannot afford buying from shopping malls and prices became different. We benefit from the stuff here. They are imported and better. The World Bank said that the financial losses suffered by the Lebanese economy and its public finances are equivalent to three times the GDP for the year 2021. Lebanese financial meltdown has sunk the currency by more than 90 percent, spread poverty and paralyzed the financial system. Turkish Defense Minister Ulusi Akar told his Russian counterpart in Kuh on Thursday that Ankara would continue responding to attacks from northern Syria after Russia asked Turkey to refrain from a full-scale Syria offensive. While earlier on Wednesday, U.S. Pentagon said that the Turkish airstrikes in northern Syria threatened the safety of U.S. military employees and the escalating situation risked years of progress in the region. 
Speaking at press briefing on the negotiations related to Iran, nuclear deal, U.S.-Iran relations and regional situation, Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdul Hayyan said Iran's negotiations on the 2015 nuclear deal with the United States are continuing while differences remain. Although Iran and the U.S. are exchanging information through diplomatic channels, some U.S. officials continue their hypocritical stance in statement to the media. I hope that under Iran's realistic attitude and in a way that best suits Iran's national interests, a good, strong and sustainable agreement can be reached by all sides during the last phase of the negotiation. Still with the Iran, Iranian media reported that an improvised bomb has killed an Iranian colonel from an aerospace division of the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps near Syria's capital Damascus. Blaming the Zionists, the Zionists, Tehran accuses Zionists of the campaign of assassination, including of scientists involved in what Iran insists is a peaceful nuclear program. In Malaysia, the longtime Malaysian statesman Anwar Ibrahim has been sworn in as country's new prime minister. The new prime minister promised to give up his salary as prime minister and he pledged to fight corruption and focus on economy. His appointment and days of post-election deadlock following inclusive elections. This is a national unity government. All are welcome, on condition you accept the fundamental rules of good governance, no corruption, and Malaysia for all Malaysians. I open up a uh, Russia-Ukraine file. Following the wave of Russian missiles attacks, Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky spoke before the United Nations Security Council, urging the group to support Ukraine, while Russia denies any attacks on Kiev in the previous days, Hussein Brkan. With winter sweeping across the front line in eastern Ukraine, turning the roads to mad drenching snow and rain, soldiers now have two more enemies, disease and power outages. Despite the cold weather, Russian troops keep shelling energy infrastructure on the capital, according to Kyiv authorities. On Wednesday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky told the UN Security Council that over 60 Russian rockets struck energy facilities and civilian objects, plunging much of the country into darkness. Um, so today is just one day, but we have received 70 missiles. That's the Russian formula of terror. This is all against our energy infrastructure. There is a hit also uh, with the uh, residential house damage. Uh, hospitals, schools, transport, uh, residential, Districts uh, all suffered. The Russian terror led to a complete blackout, not just in Ukraine, but also in, in neighboring Moldova. In turn, Russian Defense Ministry denied striking any object in Kiev the previous day and said only energy facilities related to the military command and control system of Ukraine had been targeted. I want to emphasize that not a single strike was launched on target in Kiev. All the destruction announced by the Kiev regime inside the city were caused by falling missiles launched by foreign and Ukrainian air defense systems deployed in the residential areas of the Ukrainian capital. The rest of Ukraine was also largely affected by the outages, but the reconnection of critical infrastructure to the grid continued gradually. Kosovo and uh, Serbia have reached a deal to end a long-running dispute over vehicle license plates that the European Union had warned could trigger ethnic violence. The EU's foreign policy chief Josep Borrell said Wednesday that the deal reached between Kosovo and Serbia was a common sense as they look to end a nearly two-year dispute over car license plates in northern Kosovo. What is the agreement about? It's very simple. Basically, Serbia commits to stop issuing license plates with the names of Kosovo cities. They will not issue more license plates, which was the main problem. And Kosovo commits to avoid putting into practice any action that implies a re-registration of the vehicles that already circulate with those plates. It seems like a common-sense proposition to me. 
Ceiling in the European continent, European Union energy minister locked on on Thursday of a proposed gas price cap at 275 euros per megawatt per hour. Mohamed Khatel in this report. European Union energy ministers locked horns on Thursday over a proposed gas price cap at 275 euro per megawatt hour, grappling over its effectiveness at that level and the impact on supplies and incentives to cut consumption. The long-standing disagreements were holding up other policies to alleviate the acute energy crisis, such as the launch of joint EU gas purchases and a quicker permit process for renewables. Diplomats said the 27 EU countries agreed on these two in principle, but delayed formal approval until another meeting to be held on December 13, with proponents of a cap demanding a green light for all three proposals or not at all. Polish Climate Minister Anna Moskwa called the 275 euro blueprint put forward by the European Commission a joke. In fact, we have seen no gas price cap. We have seen a document uh, about uh, uh, explanations that it would be good to have a gas price cap. The gas price uh, cap, which is in the document currently, doesn't satisfy any single country. It's, it's a kind of joke for us after so many months of discussions and proposals, written proposals, which were presented by member states. We expect the real discussion today and the document in the coming council, which we hope will be not only before Christmas, but in the coming days. And Belgium's energy minister, Tine van der Strainten, also chimed in, telling reporters the text that is on the table is unsatisfactory and does not clearly say if it will have an effect on prices. It's absolutely not clear whether the text that is on the table today will in reality have an effect on the price. And let me remind you that today in Europe, in our countries, in Belgium, but also in Netherlands, we are confronted with exceptionally high prices that are impacting our households, our industry, our businesses. We live in a war economy and we are confronted with war prices and therefore we find it necessary to intervene at the price level. For his part, the German Minister for Economic Affairs and Climate Action, Sven Jaygold, said that a lot of criticism was heard from different countries about a simple price cap. We have heard a lot of criticism from many experts from very different countries about a too simple price cap, because when I cap the price too low, then I have no more supply. If I have no more supply, then I have no more gas, and then I also haven't solved the problem. So a lot of experts are rather nuanced, and on this basis we can also reach compromises. As many as 15 EU states want a set limit to contain energy costs after gas prices soared to record highs last August, driven up by Russia cutting supplies to Europe in the wake of Western sanctions over Moscow's military operation against Ukraine. Teachers in the UK walked off the job joining schools of postal workers and university lecturers across the country in industrial action to demand better pay and working conditions to cope with the country's cost of living crisis. The strike action is being taken nationwide by 150,000 staff represented by the Communication Workers Union and it is worth noting that more strikes are planned next December. Because if we call off the strikes, we'll never get a settlement. We did that two weeks ago. We've changed our dates in response to public opinion. Uh, when, the, when the Queen passed away, when we had the Poppy Day, we've done other things. We have not had a strike for seven weeks and nothing has happened. So anyone that's been involved in industrial relations knows that there's got to be leverage and pressure at the table from both sides. And that will create the compromises uh, and the resolutions that, we all, that we're all looking for. African leaders have declared the ceasefire in Eastern Democratic Republic of Congo as from Friday with the aim of stopping attacks by the M23 rebel group. The declaration was issued by the leaders of Congo, Rwanda, Burundi and Angola and former Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta after a summit in Luanda on Wednesday devoted to finding solutions to the East Congo crisis. The small-scale summit decided the following. 
The cessation of hostilities in general, and in particular the attacks of M23 against the FARDC and MONUSCO, starting from Friday, November 25th, 2022 at 6 p.m. Sitting in Africa, Zimbabwe's president called for peace and unity as the country prepares for its 2023 general elections. In his address to the parliament, Emerson emphasized that they must maintain and consolidate the current peace, unity, harmony and love that they have built. Political players seeking the people's mandate during the upcoming 2023 harmonized general elections must, must maintain and consolidate the current peace, unity, harmony and the love that we have built. And back to the pandemic, China maintains zero COVID policy as the world opens up. Let's follow this report to have a better explanation. Whereas the world is opening up after a two-year-long COVID-19 pandemic, China is enforcing lockdown in some cities, fueling frustrations around the country with people saying they're being isolated. Scenes of massless celebrations and raucous gatherings in Qatar, which is hosting the World Cup, have irritated Chinese viewers, who have been discouraged from gathering to watch the games. Most countries worldwide have eased or even removed COVID-19 preventive measures with big events taking place. Many conferences and meetings have taken place in recent months, such as world leaders gathering in Algiers for the Arab summit, in Sharm el-Sheikh for the climate summit, or in Bali for the G20 summits, and many other gatherings as the world is living with the pandemic. But China is experiencing its worst outbreak in six months, with over 31,000 cases recorded, despite the country's zero COVID policy. The strict policy of China has saved lives in the 1.4 billion people nation, but also had a negative impact on the economy and ordinary people's lives. The zero COVID policy is wondering if the World Cup and celebrations are happening on another planet. While the rest of the world is moving forward and possibly taking risks with lifting the COVID regulations, China views COVID as a disabling disease and takes careful steps. And now for more international news, let's follow this roundup by Marab Leur. Two people have died in floods that swept across Saudi Arabia's coastal city of Jeddah on Thursday due to record rate levels. The Saudi civil defense spokesperson in the Mecca province announced the deaths on Twitter and urged residents to remain indoors unless the urgent needs. The UN Human Rights Council decided on Thursday, despite opposition from Tehran and Beijing, to open an international investigation into the crackdown on protests in Iran after the death of Masha Amini to gather evidence violations and possibly prosecute those responsible. The meeting requested by Germany and Iceland, with the backing of more than 50 countries, follows two months of protests. Peruvian farmers and truck drivers staged roadblocks as part of an ongoing protests over high gas prices and fertilizer shortages hitting the trade and tourism sectors in the South American nation. Most of the roadblocks were organized in Peru's central and southern regions, the country's ground transportation superintendent Sutran reported. Hundreds marched in Democratic Republic of Congo's eastern city of Guma on Thursday to protest against agreement between African leaders to stop attack by M23 rebels, saying it does not tackle Rwanda's alleged backing of the group. The resurgence in fighting has caused a diplomatic rift with neighboring Rwanda, which Congo accuses of backing the group while Rwanda denies it. Ending up with the sports, Switzerland edged past Cameroon 1 0, courtesy of a goal against the runoff play by Cameroon, born in Bolo on Thursday for an opening win in the World Cup Group G. The Swiss next play Brazil on Monday, with Cameroon take on, on Serbia. Another game, Uruguay has failed to impress in the early stages of the World Cup. This time it was South Korea holding Uruguay to another goalless draw in the tournament, a result that probably favors the Asian team.
Cristiano Ronaldo stamped his name into history books as the first man to score in five World Cups during Portugal's 3-2 victory over Ghana on Thursday evening. Portugal's next action on Monday will be against Uruguay, while Ghana play against South Korea. Ending up with Brazil, Richardson scored the second half brace as Brazil swept aside Serbia to register a 2-0 with a Group G match at Lucel Stadium. Richel scored twice in nine minutes to hand Brazil a comfortable win to end the game. And on what follow, results table fifth and the fourth of the tournament as well as today's games. Ending up our tonight's news bulletin with one of the beautiful moments that occurred during a press conference with Netherlands boss Luis van Gaal, who was answering journalists' questions and one of Senegalese reporters in the room raised hand and said, I have a question for you, just an opportunity to tell you that I have been a fan of you since childhood. Let's watch it. Hi, Luis. Uh, Mahmoud Gay from Senegal. I'm a young journalist who has just started and I don't have any question uh, for you. It's just the opportunity to tell you how I'm a fan of you since uh, childhood, even if you inflicted us our first defeat. And for now, all I can say, good night.